Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. I think I know what Mary had been reading for her devotions. I think she was reading 1 Samuel chapter 2. And if you go back and read 1 Samuel 2, and then you read this, I think you'll come to the same conclusion. That Mary had been greatly encouraged by the life and prayers of Hannah. You remember how it was in the days of Hannah? Uh, Eli was an old, fat, blind priest sitting on a chair out of commission. Out of commission so much that he wasn't even rebuking his own boys who were actually raping the women who came to worship and taking big hooks and pulling the, the prime rib, the filet mignon, out of the sacrifices before they offered them to Jehovah. It was so corrupt that they, they thought that the Ark of the Covenant was a good luck charm that they could haul down to their battle to win. That God was in a little box there and they, they kept him in the back room. It was desperately dark. And Hannah got down before God and she said, Oh God, give me a baby boy and I'll give him back to you. Well, what, what good would that do? Well, see, she knew God's tactics. She knew the ways of God with men. When the priesthood had become so corrupt that, that the women had to be protected from them, God's solution was to slip a little boy into the temple. Is that the way to solve the problem? Obviously so. Would you entrust your little boy to a family like that? And you know, when the, when the kingship was so corrupt in the days of King Saul that he actually had the priesthood hacked to death, was having supper with a witch to try and figure out what the will of God was, Again, God's solution was a, a little boy from Bethlehem, wasn't it? When the whole human race was so corrupt, there was no hope left. God's solution was to slip his own little boy into the human race. That was God's tactic in history. And it still is, you know. To take the weak things of the world to confound the wise, the Lord Jesus was crucified in weakness. And the preaching of the gospel is to those who perish foolishness. And God takes everything that is nothing to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. 